998, 999, 1000. Hello everyone, thanks for coming outside with today. Today I would like to talk about super heavy arrows or just heavy arrows in general. How do we achieve them? How do we get them? And is there really that much benefit from using one? So arrow weight is determined by a lot of different factors and some of them you cannot avoid. So I'd like to touch on as many of the different factors as I can today. And if you want to push to getting a heavier arrow, how you're going to have to do that. So in my hand here, I have six different arrows of varying different spines, lengths, weights, including the GPI, which is the overall grains per Per inch per arrow so each inch of carbon or aluminum how much that weighs as well as different insert systems and point weights now real quick disclaimer I am a long draw not super high pounded shooter but I do shoot 60 pounds and I have over a 30 inch draw length about 30 and a half so I have to shoot a higher spine arrow and of course spine refers to how much flex the arrow has when it's shot. The higher the poundage and the longer your draw length, the more stiff your arrow needs to be, which usually is about a 300 spine for guys my size shooting 60 pounds. But if you're a lighter pound shooter and a shorter draw length shooter, you're going to need a lighter spine, say a 340 to a 400, and if you're a lady, probably even down to a 500 spine. Now why I'm bringing this up is because the higher the spine of the arrow, the stiffer the spine of the arrow, usually the heavier the arrow gets because you have to make the wall of the carbon or the aluminum thicker and that adds overall weight overall mass to your arrow so I get to kind of cheat a little bit and I automatically get heavier arrows than the vast majority of archers that shoot in the 50s to 60s of pounds and in that 28 to 29 inch draw but even if you still are shooting a higher grains per inch arrow and a stiffer higher spined arrow you're still gonna have to push yourself to get over that 500 550 definitely to that 600 in total grains of weight we have a 400 spine Beeman ICS Hunter. We have a 340 spine gold tip cut down, a 300 spine Eastern Axis, a 300 spine Sirius Vulcan, a 300 spine gold tip XT Hunter, and a 2315, which is about a 340 spine Easton XX75 Camel Hunter. So we'll start with the lightest arrow and work our way up. So this is a very common arrow. Now it's obviously older. It has the factory long four inch plastic veins here. It's the old Beeman logo. This arrow is a very common arrow that you would get in terms of its spine and in terms of the insert and point system if you were to go to your local pro shop or your box store. So this is a 400 spine arrow. So for you guys shooting in the 55, maybe 60 pound range and close to that 27, 28 inch draw length, this is probably going to be the arrow that you're going to shoot. You're going to shoot about a 28 inch cut arrow, maybe 29 if you really want to push it. And you can put in a standard aluminum insert and a 100 grain point. This total arrow weight only weighs about four. 408 grains which is not that heavy and there's not a whole lot you can do to this arrow to increase your overall weight once you start adding a whole bunch of point weight in particular to the front end you're really gonna soften up this spine it's actually gonna become too weak and you're gonna have to bump up in spine and now you're talking a much heavier arrow and a much uh, lobbier trajectory right it's not gonna fly as flat so that's why this is a much more common style of arrow now this is a little higher GPI at 400 it's an 8.2 You'll see a lot of 400 spine arrows be, or excuse me, this is an 8.4. You might see a lot of arrows at the 8.2 range, maybe even the high sevens. That's not going to give you a super heavy arrow. That's just not going to be able to produce that overall mass in this 400 spine. So if you want to bump up in weight, you're going to have to shoot a higher GPI arrow, which means you're probably going to have to go up in spine to save something like a 340. So here's a 340 gold tip cut down. Same thing though. It's got a standard aluminum insert and a 100 grain point, which is very typical for the archery industry for the vast majority of broadheads that are available. So this arrow though still only weighs about 420 grains with the three blazers and a standard knock. So that's still not super heavy. So with gold tip though you can add brass components. Again you're going to have to buy that aftermarket though. You can also bump up to 125 grain point. But now instead of this much lighter smaller package here you're now talking over 225 total grains in the front. And you're going to have the same problem with your 400 spine arrow that if you're shooting in that 20 28, 29 inch draw, this is probably going to be again too weak and you're not going to get the arrow flight that you want and particularly if you shoot a fixed braid broadhead like I do. So again you're probably going to have to bump up in spine. Now unless you really like that arrow in that 420s, maybe 430 if you can squeak it, you can maybe add a 125 grain point at uh, front let's say and closer to a 450 mark. I think that's a really good arrow weight for whitetail and particularly here in the continent of the United States in those bow hunting distances of 30 yards and in really. A 340 spine arrow is very 
pretty common for hunters shooting in that shorter-ish draw length, 28, 29 inches, and up to 70, maybe 65 pounds, depending on the overall speed of your bow and how much force you're adding to the arrow so it doesn't flex too much. So this is the first arrow that I was able to cheat with. This is a micro diameter, a 204 Easton Axis arrow, which because it's a smaller diameter, it has to have a thicker wall in order to maintain rigidity and also increase the spine. So it's a denser, smaller diameter arrow, and I was able to get away with just a 100 grain point and the standard aluminum head insert, three blazers and a wrap, and this arrow weighs 466 grains without me even trying anything. If I throw in a lighted knock, I can add an extra 10, maybe 15 grains. So now I'm really talking in the 470s, 480s, and now you're starting to talk about a heavier arrow. It's not super heavy. Uh, it's definitely not in that uh, really high end of 550 to 600 and up, but it is definitely a very viable arrow for a lot of whitetail archers. Now the problem with shooting a micro diameter arrow like this, and particularly something that has such a thick wall, is that it's going to be expensive. It's very uncommon that you come across micro diameter arrows with a higher GPI. This one's 10.7 grains per inch, significantly higher than the eights that we were talking about with the 340 and the 400 spine. You're going to talk well over $100 for just a dozen shafts. So whereas the other ones, you can easily pick up for 60, 70 bucks a dozen just for the shafts themselves. So now you've gone up in price point, even though you've gone up in spine, you've gone up in GPI, but now you have have to swallow a few more dollars. Now even if you aren't a higher poundage longer draw length shooter you can still shoot an axis or a smaller diameter arrow that has a higher GPI. So for example the 340 of this spine is still in that really high nines low tens which is still higher than the ones that we just saw there with the gold tip cut down which is only 8.9. So now you're still increasing your overall arrow mass. You're still keeping that spine in a more appropriate spine range and you don't have to do anything really fancy on the front end. Your FOC is going to suffer. We'll talk about that here in a second because right now I'm not shooting any brass. I'm not shooting 125 grain point, but I still have a really heavy arrow. But there's a lot of things that you can still do with a smaller diameter arrow that you can't with a standard diameter one just based on its thick interior wall. The next arrow that I have here is a serious Vulcan arrow. Now this is a standard diameter arrow, but it has a really thick wall just like the Eastern Axis. So in a standard diameter, it's 10 grains per inch. So it's super heavy in terms of its overall overall shaft weight, but it maintains that standard diameter. So you can use standard components in it. For example, I have a gold tip aluminum insert, and then I have the footer that comes from Ethics Archery. Now and I've also done by added a 125 grain bullet point onto the end. So now we're talking 15% FOC here. Now we're really creeping up in FOC, whereas that Easton Axis was barely cracking 10, which is still pretty good for a hunting arrow, 10% and up, but 15 is going to be better for that FOC number. But now again, you're talking the same problem with the axis arrow, and that is you're adding a lot more carbon, you're adding a lot more specs that need to go into this arrow, and therefore you're getting a much more expensive arrow. A three pack of these with the insert and footer system are going to run you about 40 bucks from Sirius, and that is definitely not cheap. That's going to put you, if you would multiply that by four, you're talking now 160 bucks for a dozen arrows. Now that is not out of this world. There are lots of arrows that are still more expensive, but for for local guys like me that just want to go out and harvest a white tail or two a year and you don't do that much shooting, this is a price point that's hard to stomach. But if you do want that higher overall weight, the ability to add a lot of FOC and have a really tough durable hunting shaft, this is a really great option. So this is my personal favorite hunting arrow. It's a gold tip XT Hunter in 300 spine. Now it's a much lighter GPI than what we saw with the Axis and we saw with the Sirius. It's only a 9.3. So we're almost shaving off an entire grain or actually a grain and a half when you compare it to the Axis in GPI. But I've added brass and I've added 125 grain points. So I have 225 grains of point weight up in the front and standard blazers and then I'll eventually run a lighted knock here in the back. This puts me well over 15% FOC and so I'm maintaining a good overall weight. I'm well over 540 grains, about 548 grains and I'm maintaining a higher FOC and I'm using a really durable shaft. In my opinion gold tips can't be beat for a mass market produced shaft and they 
they run about 80 to 90 dollars for a dozen so they are a little bit up in price point because of their tolerances these are a 3000 straightness plus or minus one grain of sorting weight but i'm now able to add the brass components about 17 dollars for a 12 pack and the standard 125 grain point i think it's a really good option for anybody really you could shoot 100 grains of brass 125 grain point with a 300 spine even out of a shorter draw lighter poundage bow because there's a lot of flex now that's been added to this arrow because of all the weight on the front end. Now you still might be asking yourself, okay, so the series are expensive and the axis are expensive and this one isn't as expensive, but now you're starting to add extra components. What's the overall price per arrow that you're creating? So real quick, let's break down the actual price of these heavier than normal arrows. So the axis, let's just say it's about 120 bucks for a dozen arrows. It's actually a little bit less than that, but we'll keep the math simple. That makes it $10 a shaft. Then you throw in a couple of blazers and the standard knock you're in, and, and point insert system. You're talking probably about 12 bucks per total arrow for the complete build because it's going to come with knocks. Now, I've added the wrap as a personal touch, but you don't have to. So the Sirius Arrow runs about $40 for three. So if you multiply that by four, you're going to get 160 You divide that over the total of 12 shafts. You're talking about $13 per arrow. Throw some blazers on there and maybe you have about $15. 15, 14 dollars per arrow created. Now for the gold tip, you're talking about 85, 90, let's just say it's $90 for a dozen shafts, and now you have to include the brass. So you've got $90 in a dozen shafts, which brings you to about $750 per arrow, and then you have about $1.40 per brass insert. So now you're talking $750 plus $1.40, you're now talking less than $9 per arrow, whereas you were getting almost 12 and $13 at least per arrow for your axis and your series. So in terms of its price and in terms of the price point, the gold tip and it's adding the front weight is going to win. And these actually, this arrow actually weighs more than these two. So I have a cheaper arrow system. I have a heavier arrow system. I have a higher FOC arrow system. And for me, that just takes the cake on all fronts. So even though it's nice to spend less than $9 in arrow, arrow per arrow for the gold tip system. It is laughable when you compare it to shooting aluminum and I would be remiss if I didn't bring this up. So shooting aluminum arrows is still an incredibly highly viable option for a hunting arrow. The only issue with them is is that they will bend and they will stay bent unless you have a particular arrow straightener. Now if they're still a little bent and you're shooting them to 20-25 yards, does it really matter? Probably not, but I like to make sure that my arrows are straight as possible. In terms of their weight sorting and and their straightness tolerances from the factory, you cannot beat the price point of aluminum arrows. You're talking a fat 1,000 straightness, you're talking plus or minus one grain, and you can get a dozen XX75 Camel Hunters for about 65 bucks for a dozen shafts. So for $5.50 or less per arrow, you could add whatever fletchings you want. These are boning X veins, they're three inches long. This is my particular indoor arrow setup right now, but you could still shoot those for hunting. I'm using the standard aluminum insert that comes with the these shafts and 125 grain point. This is a 570 grain arrow and I'm not even trying. You're talking 11.7 grains per inch. Incredibly heavy, really good thick wall with that 2315. The 23 refers to the diameter of the shaft from wall to wall on the outside, 23 64 of an inch. And the 15 refers to the thickness of the wall on the inside. So that's 15 64 of an inch. So you're talking thick wall, you're talking a good size diameter with that 23 64 of an inch, and you're talking a lot of weight flying down range, and I'm not even having to buy extra components, I'm not having to add extra thing, and it's a really, really good price point. So lastly, do you really need to be shooting a super heavy arrow, 500, 550 and up? And I would say no, you don't have to, but ever since that I started shooting heavy arrows again, I used to shoot aluminum arrows all the time as a kid because they were affordable, they were easy to find and I would get pass throughs on animals shooting 45 50 pounds and a fixed blade muzzy or uh, three blade uh, NAP Thunderhead broadhead and I was just having really good success and then I went to carbon I was shooting lighter and I was shooting mechanicals and I wasn't getting the same pass through potential I was hoping for pass throughs instead of expecting pass throughs it used to be that I would shoot an aluminum arrow and I would just spend five minutes after looking for the arrow in the ground before I would even begin the blood trail because I expected it that 
much. With a carbon arrow, that wasn't always a given that I was shooting that 415, 420 grain arrow and a three blade mechanical on the front. But ever since I started shooting heavier arrows again, that 470 to now 550, and I've also started shooting fixed blade broadheads completely again with the Magnus line. I have seen pass throughs on almost every single animal. And if I'm not getting pass throughs, I'm getting incredible penetration. Again, nothing wrong with shooting a mechanical, nothing wrong with shooting a lighter arrow. But if you want a higher pass through potential, and instead of hoping for a pass through, you just expect to pass through, I strongly recommend you start shooting a heavier arrow. Increase your FOC if you want, factor in the money per component, and pick an arrow that's right for you. So that's all for this video. If you have any other questions on arrow building or adding a whole bunch of FOC, going with super monolithic high, big FOC broadheads or anything else that pertains to bow hunting and arrows, please do leave a comment down below. Hit me up on Facebook, Instagram. My email is even down in the description if you want that more personal touch. Hope you're able to get outside, enjoy the sport of archery, and archery hunting if you so choose. Definitely enjoy God's beautiful creation and we'll get to see you next time.